Hello there. <laughs> I hope that you are doing so, so well. I am doing rather lovely. So before we even get into anything, I just want to let you know right now, this is probably not going to be the best ASMR video you've ever heard in your life. Because for one, I do have my heat blasting and I'll let you know why later on in the video. Two, because I'm not whispering. Um, just feel like the sound of the heat is a little bit too loud for a whisper right now. So I just decided to do like a quiet talk or what is it called? soft spoken so we'll see how that goes honestly i really just wanted to check in to let you know that i am still here i'm not going anywhere um i haven't made a video all this year so i really just wanted to come and to say hi and to check on you you know what i mean you know what i mean <laughs> i hope that you had a very merry christmas and a very happy new year i am so glad to see you here in 2024 okay it is absolutely a blessing i am feeling so good now that this year has actually started because let me tell you i don't know what it is but i always get like super anxious towards the end of each year is that normal <laughs> the closer we get to the end of each year i'm like oh shoot oh shoot my stomach drops a little bit every time i think about the fact that the year is almost over I have felt the same way for years and I honestly really don't know why that is. I don't know if it's because the year is running out and I feel pressured to get something done before the new year starts. I don't know if I'm a little upset because I haven't done everything that I said I wanted to get done throughout that year or if it's the thought of everything i want to accomplish in the coming year and all of the work that i'm gonna have to put in to do so i don't know if it's because october november and december are my favorite months of the year so i'm kind of sad about them leaving or something <laughs> like i don't want them to be over yet maybe it's a mixture of all of those things plus more but I can definitely say that I have exited the end of the year anxiety phase and I'm super happy about that. Now I'm actually feeling very refreshed, very motivated, and ready to take on whatever this new year has for me. I'm excited and I hope you are too because you're freaking amazing and I truly believe that there are many great things in store for you this year. Let's come into agreement on that and make the most of this year, okay? Y'all, I just got back from Chicago, Illinois. Do you say Illinois or Illinois? It was my very first time ever visiting Chicago in my life. Well, I keep calling it Chicago, but it's really like the outskirts of Chicago. Still very close though. But I actually have family who live in that area, including one of my uncles. He actually passed away recently and we traveled there for his funeral. So that was the main reason for me being there. That was actually the longest road trip I've ever taken in my life. But it went a lot smoother than I expected it to. I did sleep majority of the ride there and majority of the ride back so it was cool <laughs> i packed so many clothes y'all because i heard that the cold in chicago was a bit brutal you know but honestly it wasn't that bad um it was cold don't get me wrong but it wasn't as bad as i thought it was gonna be or maybe i was just well dressed for it because i did wear one of my bigger coats so <laughs> anyway the cold didn't bother me i actually loved it by the time we got there, it was already kind of late in the evening, so we just decided to go ahead and check into our hotel, get some dinner, and then just call it a night, right? So we get to the hotel to check in. We had already made reservations for four rooms and whatnot. One for my mom and stepdad, one for my cousin and his wife, one for another cousin, her husband, and their daughter, and then one for my big sister and I, we shared a room. The only problem was that they had actually ran out of rooms with like the two full-size beds in them, like two separate beds, so we had to settle for a room that just had one big king-size bed. 
So we had to sleep together and we were both like, um, do I really want to sleep with you? <laughs> it's been years since we slept together. I don't know. We were just joking though. It wasn't that big of a deal. But I did tell her not to be having any crazy dreams thinking that I'm her boyfriend in the bed with her while we're sleeping. Just saying. That's disgusting. Anyway, we go and we put our stuff in our room. Then we met back in the lobby with everyone else to see kind of what we wanted to eat for dinner. The lady who worked at the front desk said that there was a nice Mexican restaurant nearby. We decided to just go to this Mexican restaurant, right? It was something simple. We all like Mexican food. It was close by. Why not? Man, we got there, got seated, and started looking over the menu, right? Not a chimichanga, not a taco, not a burrito in sight. Do you hear me? <laughs> this restaurant was not at all what we thought it was going to be. It was more of a Spanish cuisine place, not just a regular Mexican restaurant. And we realized that after looking at the menu. <laughs> it wasn't what we were used to, but when I tell you it was freaking delicious, we all absolutely loved our food. Oh my goodness. I got the grilled lamb chops and they came with some super fresh green beans on top of these like very thinly sliced potatoes and it was topped it was all topped with this red sauce now when they first brought our food out i really thought that the red sauce was gonna end the whole meal for me because it looked like it was gonna taste like tomato soup or something which i'm not a fan of i really don't like tomato-y foods i don't even like ketchup but i can sit and eat a raw tomato all day long crazy right but when i say everything on my plate was absolutely delicious even down to the red sauce now i want some more and i don't think we're anywhere near one of those restaurants my sister and i also had margaritas to go with our food they were super delicious as well but a bit strong but who minds that after leaving the restaurant we went to this huge Target because my sister and I had forgotten to pack our shower shoes, right? So we all went to Target so that we could get some. But this Target was literally the biggest Target I had ever stepped foot in in my entire life. I didn't even know Targets that big existed, but I loved it. And I don't know about y'all, but I had never in my life been in a Target that sold hard liquor until then. I mean, you usually see the regular alcohol, like beer, seltzers, and whatnot. But this Target had the real stuff. I was so shocked. Me and my sister only had one drink at the restaurant, but we wanted to turn things up just a little bit more, if you know what I mean. <laughs> just to have a little fun. Safely, though safely we can't just be out here doing just anything so we ended up running across these little margaritas in target i think they were called on the rocks and they came in these little tiny little cute bottles we ended up getting two little bottles each right y'all when i tell you those two little bottles were too big bottling i mean they really put us in there <laughs> What I didn't realize was that these little bottles had 20% alcohol in them. That's a bit much for me. <laughs> Nevertheless, we still had a great safe time. <laughs> so later that night, after getting out of the shower, I tried to sneak in on my side of the bed so that I don't wake my sister up, right? In my brain, I just knew that if she felt any type of movement in that bed, <laughs> she was probably gonna think that she was at home in the bed with her man she's had a bit to drink she's not about to immediately remember hey i'm in chicago right now raven and i are sharing a bed you know what i mean so i'm trying my best not to make a sound i'm trying not to move the bed too much i don't want to alert her at all because if she touches me i'm throwing up right here and now so yeah, I finally get my body in the bed and kind of snuggle in, right? All of a sudden, I hear my sister rolling over in the bed and she says, Baby, I know not. <laughs> I say, girl, no, no, 
this is not your baby this is raven do not touch me i'm raven ain't no baby <laughs> i had to make sure i killed whatever dream she might have been having in that moment because no Ugh. she ended up going back to sleep almost instantly and luckily that's all that happened that night we both tripped out about it the next morning she didn't even remember any of that <laughs> but yeah i just thought that was a funny little moment the next day we went to my uncle's funeral and afterwards we drove to the gravesite right now this cemetery was the biggest cemetery i've ever seen in my life i mean it literally looked like it would go on for miles and miles it was just huge as we we're driving through the cemetery trying to get like towards the area where my uncle would be buried we passed by so many graves that looked like they were fairly new, fairly fresh, you know? But the most heartbreaking part about seeing all of these new graves on both sides of this little road that we were driving down was the sheer amount of young people that these graves belonged to. I mean, teenagers, early 20s, early 30s, tons of them i could not believe my eyes it absolutely broke my heart to ride by and see all of those babies one after another and another i don't know exactly what their cause of death was any of them but with that many young people come on now of course illnesses happen car accidents happen all types of things happen but if I'm honest, the first thing that popped into my head was gun violence, flat out murder. And it's crazy because you always hear about all of these killings and things that go on in Chicago. Not that I'm knocking Chicago in any way because things happen everywhere, not just Chicago. But to see all of these graves with all of these young people, it really put things into perspective for me. Like, this stuff really does happen, and as we were leaving the cemetery, there were about five more funerals coming into the cemetery as we were leaving. I couldn't help but wonder how many of those were young people as well. It was just so saddening. Uh, my heart is still so heavy just thinking about it. I couldn't do anything but pray for the entire city after seeing that man. There's obviously a lot going on there and many other places. I really wish it didn't have to be that way. But hey, I'm just grateful. I am so grateful for my life. I am grateful that God has allowed us all to be here for this long. Thank you for protecting us, God. I thank God for you, for waking you up day after day giving you a new start and fresh opportunities to be the best you that you can be. Such a blessing that you're even listening to me right now. I'm not trying to preach y'all. I'm just so grateful and full of joy for all of us. Anyway, we ended up having to leave Chicago a day early because they were expecting a snowstorm to hit that night. We didn't want to risk getting stuck in Chicago. We all knew we had to be back in our city by a certain time so that we can handle our business. So we left and we made it home safely. Thank you, Jesus. And currently we're all stuck in our houses because the roads are iced over and there is plenty of snow outside. Very pretty. <laughs> we drove out of a winter storm only to be stuck in one when we got back home that's funny i'm not complaining though at least we're at home and not stuck anywhere else right i knew it was coming i actually prepared for it ahead of time i went to the store and stocked up on some things that i knew i would need while i was shut in so i'm good the office i work at is also shut down due to the weather so i'm pretty much chilling right now <laughs> happy that i get a chance to just rest and do nothing before i have to get back to my regular schedule by the way that is why i had the heat on because it's so cold outside right now and i didn't want to be shivering you know so did you guys make any new year's resolutions this year that is something that i honestly really never do well kind of but kind of not <laughs> What it is is that I guess I don't like calling them 
New Year's resolutions? Because when I think of New Year's resolutions, I think of feel-good ideas that aren't actually going to blossom into anything. Fake plans that I won't even care about by the time January 31st rolls around. You know what I mean? And no, I am absolutely not saying that that's all New Year's resolutions are. That is absolutely not true. (laughs) But for me, there's just something about the actual phrase New Year's resolutions that I just really don't like. I almost look at it as if it has like a bad reputation or something because you always hear about people giving up on their new year's resolutions not doing anything they said they were gonna do or wouldn't do during that year i don't know it kind of just puts a bad taste in my mouth but even though i don't like that phrase i do still take the time to take note of the changes that i want to make in my life for the following year What I have the power to do myself to make this year a better year than I had the year before. What goals I would like to achieve within X amount of months, whatever the case may be, right? So far, one of the biggest things I'm working on right now revolves around time management, creating structured routines for myself. Mainly for the purpose of cutting down on the amount of anxiety I feel on any given day due to not having a very structured routine, you know what I mean? So just to give you a bit of insight so you understand, each day I would wake up with this big cloud of everything I had to do that day hovering over me. I know it sounds crazy, but this cloud was a very heavy cloud. Like I almost feel the weight or the pressure of all that I had to do that day, you know? As the day went on, there was total chaos in my brain all day from not knowing what to do first, when to actually start, wondering when I'm gonna finish this or if I should go ahead and move on to that. And before I know it, three hours have gone by and I haven't done any of it. So now I'm super under pressure to get things done and I get them done. But after all that pressure, mentally, I'm not okay. And I did it to myself, right? Well, I recently came to the realization that I thrive when I know exactly what I need to do, when I need to do it. What I need to do after I do the things that I've already done all while doing everything in great timing. I thrive when I have everything that I need to do laid out in front of me, start to finish. And then all that's left for me to do is to actually do them. And I know it sounds so simple. It really is, but for some reason, I never took the time out to actually sit down and plan my day plan my year anything i would always hear about planning your day your week your month but it's just something i never did it's easy for me to do things that are important you know any appointments i may have or anything someone has asked me to do for them because those things usually come with a specific date and time attached right But it's like when I have the freedom to choose what I want to do and when, I'm all over the place. (laughs) I cannot tell you how much easier my life has gotten now that I have some type of structure in each day. All I really do is kind of write down what I know I need to do that day. I'll give myself a little start and finish time for each of those things. I'll include like little breaks and whatnot if I feel like I need it. So far, so good. I've been doing great at managing my time and the best part is I'm not so stressed every day. That was really a big deal for me because who wants to feel like that? Another thing I've been working on is just getting back into my healthier eating habits. I'm not gonna lie, during the holidays, I pretty much just let myself pig out and enjoy without worrying about what I should be eating or if I'm eating too much of this. I give myself a little pass, you know, but it is time for me to shake back, get back on track. And to be honest with you, I don't mind at all because I feel so much better when I eat healthier. 
don't get me wrong, I enjoyed every second of picking out, but I can definitely feel it now. I've been feeling a little heavier, a bit sluggish in a way. I can just really tell the difference in my body. And yeah, so I've been working to get everything back on track in that area. Another thing that I'm focused on right now is simply actively taking the steps that I need to take in order to accomplish the goals that I want to accomplish. I cannot tell you how many goals and plans I've had in my life that I sat on and I didn't do anything with them. I'm not even going to get into all of that right now. All I know is that I am determined not to sleep on myself any longer and I am going to take the necessary steps to get to where I want to be. I'm not just going to talk about what I want to do. I'm going to do it because I can and you should too because you can and I'm so serious. Another thing I know is that baby fever is very real right now. <laughs> Not necessarily for myself, but for someone around me, like my cousin or my sister. If you didn't know, I don't have any children of my own. I love the idea of having my own, but I don't feel like I'm quite ready for that just yet. <laughs> Most of you have heard me talk about my niece and my nephew a few times. They're my sister's children and they've been glued to me ever since they came out of the womb, okay? <laughs> I've always been super close with the two of them. Um, I love them like they're my own kids, <laughs> seriously. And sometimes I truly think that they believe I am their mom because whew, the things that they have the audacity to ask me for or to do for them, child, and they know I love them too. That's why they're so comfortable approaching me with the absolute impossible. <laughs> but anyway, when they were babies, I was so in love with them. Oh my gosh. I still am, but it's a different type of love when they're like in that infant stage and toddler stage. They're just so small and cute and innocent until they have a blowout and you're the one who has to change their diaper so cuddly and loving and it's just amazing to watch them grow day by day growing into themselves with their very own little personalities being able to take care of them give them everything that they need to be happy and healthy i just love it i think another thing for me is just knowing how much you really mean to them even though they can't even grasp the idea of that just yet, I still feel like they can feel the, the love that you have for them and they know that they can come to you for comfort. They know and trust that you always have everything that they need, you know what I mean? I love being able to give them that, still to this day, even though it's a little bit different now because they're 15 and almost 13, so... You know, they kind of like their own space and whatnot. Uh, don't want to be bothered. We all know how that goes. But I just feel like I'm ready to start all over again. I feel like my sister needs to have another baby. And she's taking too long. It's so funny. I always joke with my close friends and my cousin. And I'm like, one of y'all needs to have me a baby so I can spoil it and send it back home when I'm tired, okay? Hurry. Everyone is like, Raven, it is your turn to have a baby now. You're gonna be next. And I'm like, for what? That's what I got y'all for. Are you kidding? <laughs> Just joking, but people always ask me, when are you gonna have a baby, Raven? Are you guys trying for a baby? Uh, excuse me? And my mom is always joking like, Raven is gonna wait until I'm too old to hold her baby by the time she decides to have one. <laughs> Chill, mom. If it's God's will, I got you. <laughs> but I've been seeing so many precious little babies lately and it makes me think. Making me want to make some huge life-changing decisions right now. <laughs> Just kidding, but hey, we'll see what 2024 brings. That is all I have for this very out of whack video. <laughs> I want to thank you so, so much for watching and I hope you still enjoyed it somehow. I hope that you have a great night, day, whatever you're having. I am out of here.
See you later.